Recently, I took a trip to Antelope Canyon with my dogs. The only way that you can bring your dogs is to kayak in. You cannot bring them on Slot Canyon tours. You can't bring them on kayaking tours. You have to rent a kayak and bring them yourself. When I was planning the trip, I felt pretty confused and overwhelmed and I wish that there was more information online. What helped a lot was a few people who had posted their experience actually doing this. So I wanted to post all the details for my trip to hopefully help anyone else who is trying to plan this. It is a bucket list experience. We had an amazing time. I definitely recommend doing this. The first step is to book your kayak rental. The company and location that I ended up renting from was Antelope Point Marina. I saw some bad reviews online for them. So I spent hours trying to find a different company to rent from. But unfortunately, all the companies I found would either launch from a different marina or would simply let you rent the kayaks, but they wouldn't actually bring them to you. You'd have to pick them up and bring them to your destination. Some of the websites said that they would actually bring them to the marina for you, but because of the extremely low water levels, at least at the time of my trip, they weren't offering that service. So I would say check with them because that could change. Antelope Point Marina is the marina that you have to launch from in order to have a straight shot to the Antelope Canyon entrance. So you do have to be at this marina. Thankfully, I can say that we did not have any problems with our kayak at all. Like the rental went smoothly. So I do recommend this company. Everything we bought in preparation for our trip, you can get it on Amazon. I'll actually try to link it below for you. The only thing that the rental company for the kayaks is going to supply to you is the kayaks and then life jackets for humans, none for dogs. So we bought life jackets for our dogs. I have two dogs, small and medium size. So we got this one and then this one and we just ordered them ahead of time to make sure that they would fit and we could try them on. We bought water shoes, definitely get water shoes. We bought something called a dry bag, which is like a waterproof bag. We got a pretty big one so that we could fit a lot of like clothes and shoes in it, which I do recommend. We also bought waterproof bags for our phones that had like straps around your neck, um, which was nice because we could just access our phones, take pictures and like not worry about them. This is the dry bag. It looks huge, but when you put everything in, you roll it over like a couple of times so that it's sealed. So then it's like the size of a backpack. So it's not too big, but big enough to carry some stuff. It's kind of been sitting at the bottom of the bag for a while, but this is the phone case situation that we got. These are waterproof. They like snap closed. It's pretty big too. You can put your phone and maybe like your key or your ID or something in here. And then you can just wear it around your neck so you don't have to worry about it plummeting to the bottom of the lake. If it's hot the time of the year that you're going, I would recommend booties for the dog. There's a pretty big stretch at the beginning of the hike that's exposed to the sun before you reach the actual canyons. So the ground was getting a little bit hot by the time we got back. Also the best purchase I made, absolute best purchase I've like ever made. If you have a smaller dog, we bought a carrier to strap on. You can wear it in like the front or the back and then she just like goes in here and it made it so much easier for us to carry her. So I really, really recommend that because there was times when she was like so tired, she would not have been able to hike for as long as we wanted to hike. And I just threw her in the carrier and she was like, yes, thank you. And it was easier for us than having to actually carry her. So we brought two bags with us, the dry bag that I showed you and then like a cooler backpack. We already had that, so we didn't buy it for the trip. If you have something similar, use it. I would probably recommend buying one if you don't because having the actual backpack with you when you hike is so much better. In the cooler we had two sandwiches for us, like some crackers, some shredded chicken for the dogs, and then we filled the rest of the space with as much water as it could fit and all I can say is like pack so much water. We have a doggy travel water bottle, we clipped that onto the outside of the bag and we were just continuously filling it for them. We also had a big water bottle for ourselves that we didn't pack away. We had it out while we were paddling and stuff so that we could stay hydrated while we were in the kayak. So in the dry bag, 
We fit a lot of stuff in that dry bag. We packed a change of clothes for walking the canyon, including our hiking shoes. We packed the dog's harnesses and leashes for the hike. Um, we brought sunscreen. We had our car key in there. We only brought our IDs and I think like one credit card. We did not bring our wallets. No need to have your whole wallet out on the water with you. We also threw in, I wanna say a rope and a whistle. I, I would say we were being overprepared, but I was nervous. I'm not a huge kayaker and honestly, it never hurts to bring along some safety items. I would also recommend a towel in your kayak on the way there and then a dry one in your bag that you can use on the way back especially if you have a small dog my small dog was much more comfortable to sit down on the towel than sitting on the actual kayak day of i wore a bathing suit but i was layered up in the morning it was it was cold in the morning but warmed up a lot throughout the day so i had on like athletic leggings a long sleeve shirt an athletic zip up my water shoes were on, I wore a hat, but if you wear a hat, make sure it's really tight to your head um, in case it's windy. And had my sunglasses on. I also wanted to mention gloves. We did not have gloves, but my boyfriend did mention he wished he had some. I thought I was paddling pretty hard, but I guess he must have been paddling much harder because my hands didn't hurt that bad. I really wanted to talk about the weather because this can have a huge impact on your trip. First off, picking the time of year. The time of year that I went was mid-April. In my opinion, the timing was perfect. The water was still really cold. The weather was pretty cold in the morning, but my, by midday, the sun was out and like we were hot. The high was about 75 that day, but with the sun beating down on you and you know, you're being active, you're hiking, I would say if it was any hotter, we wouldn't have been able to hike for as long as we did because the dogs wouldn't have honestly been able to handle it. They drank so much water, it was insane. I really would not recommend going with your dogs in the summer. I think it would be too hot to have an enjoyable experience. The other like huge thing about the weather at Lake Powell is the factor of the wind. Do not go on a windy day. I had read about how choppy and rough the conditions can get with the wind. So I was keeping my eye on the wind, like leading up to the trip. We actually woke up that day and I had mentioned like, it looks like the wind's kind of bad, but we just got ready. When we went outside, the wind was gusting and the kayak company actually called us and they said, if you want to go, you can, but because of the wind conditions, we'll let you reschedule if you want. We had one more day staying in town. We were staying in Page, So we just asked, let's just do it tomorrow. So we just moved it to the next day. Thank goodness we did because I was already nervous, not having much kayaking experience. And it was a lot of work, like getting the kayaking, getting to the canyon. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of work. Getting used to the kayak was a lot. Like, I cannot imagine if it was like even harder because of the wind. The kayak rental started at 8 a.m. and the time zones were a little weird, but it was the same time zone that was on my phone. I didn't know if the marina was gonna be in a different time zone because the time zones are back and forth up there. I read online like be the first one there and, and get out early. So I was like, I wanna be there at seven, but you know how it is with the two dogs. They're trying to pack our bags our sunscreen on it was early it was, i think it was about 7 45 when we got to the marina when you get there you just park anywhere in the parking lot it's a big parking lot get all your things together and bring them up to the front i was a bit confused when i got there because it seemed like no one was working there was like no, no one there nothing going on but there was a security worker and he actually told us to wait for a ride they have golf carts that will bring you down so you just let them know that you need a ride, wait your turn, and a golf cart will bring you to the actual marina where there's people and, and things. I do believe we waited at least like 20 minutes just for a ride to pick us up. And there, were, there was only a couple people in front of us, but once the golf cart brings you there, that is when you will like check in and all that. It was not busy at this time. 
I checked in while my boyfriend was like waiting outside on the dock and put the dog's like life vests on and got them ready. And then after I checked in, we picked out our life vests and they brought us to our kayak. We went with a double kayak. So my boyfriend sat in the back with our like 50 pound dog, kind of like on his lap, there was a decent amount of room. It was like the dog took up kind of like all the room in front of him though. I sat up front with our 10 pound dog. So she was kind of more just like between my legs than on my lap because she's so tiny. I'm very happy with our decision to do a double kayak. There was definitely plenty of room for all four of us and our two bags. Not like plenty of room. I mean, you could probably fit like bigger dogs, but I would say like try not to have more than two dogs more than two bags. It does strap into the kayak, so it's secure, but still like there's only so much room. I also personally was not comfortable paddling and steering a kayak by myself. And now that I know like how difficult it was, I am so glad we had the double kayak to be doing it together. The employee just really showed us to our kayak and I'm just kind of like, okay, have fun. Um, you know, you're off. It was about 9 a.m. when we actually got out on the water which actually felt like really good timing, especially with the weather and it was still really quiet at the marina. So we started paddling and we're kind of like, um, you know, where do we go now? It's pretty easy to figure out, but if you're like me, you probably don't want to be, you know, guessing while you're in the middle of the of water floating in a kayak with two dogs. <laughs> So when you start heading away from the marina, like there's only one direction that you can go to leave the marina. So you actually have to start leaving the marina and head over to the right. There's a big opening to the right. You'll see the buoys as you get closer. There's plenty of room for like you and other boats to go through. It's a pretty big opening. I also will say to why I was very happy we got an early start is because like the water, it was quiet. There was only a handful of boats that passed us while we were on our way out in the morning. And if your dogs are not familiar with being on a kayak, like ours aren't, <laughs> having this like calm time on the water is helpful. My little dog was cold. Like the paddle kept dripping on her head. She hates water, so I wasn't worried about her jumping in. But our larger dog loves water, so we, <laughs> there's my two dogs actually. She loves water, so we did not know how she would react. Thankfully, she did not feel inclined to jump in, but she did need time to adjust and get comfortable. And like every time she repositioned the kayak, would like shake a little bit. Once you exit the marina, you go through that far right, you, you're out of the marina, you're not in the no wake zone anymore. So emphasis on why you wanna go early, few boats as possible makes it a lot better. Just try to keep your distance from boats and like anticipate when they're coming so you can be careful for their wake. After about a mile, that is an estimate. I like, I don't know. I, it, I mean, it's a decent estimate, a mile, um, roughly. Um, I just don't know exactly how much, but after about a mile, Antelope Canyon will be on your left. The first opening in the rocks, so if you're looking and you're like, oh, I think I see an opening, then you probably do. That's probably Antelope Canyon because it is like literally the first opening on the left. I'll post a little screenshot of the map of the water so that you can actually see the path and where it's gonna be. So just keep your eye out and then when you think you see it, you know, head to the left, make sure you're close to that side because that's probably it. So as you approach the entrance, you'll see like a big no wake zone sign. So if you see that, then you're in the right place. You wanna go down that way. And then you can paddle down the canyon and the further in that you get, the more calm and peaceful the waters are. So you really can just like relax and enjoy the view and take it all in. There won't be like a question when you have reached the end. I remember that was my thing. I'm like, how am I gonna know when I'm there and when I'm supposed to get out? Like the water literally ends. So you don't need to be like looking for a docking point. You literally just are going and then the water just ends. So like you have to get out. When we arrived, there was like a few other kayaks there and there were some 
nice people who actually helped us out because you do have to pick up your kayak and like leave it on the dry land so you have to get it out of the water and onto the land so that it doesn't float away while you're gone. Everyone left their kayak and left stuff they didn't need in their kayak. We brought almost everything with us except for probably the life vests, our towels. We left our wet clothes and shoes to dry. We had to find like a secluded spot to change, but I mean, changing is optional. It's really the shoes that you have to change. Definitely, definitely change into those hiking shoes. We put the dogs into their harnesses and their leashes and we started our hike. And the first 30 minutes is, I mean, it is certainly beautiful, but it is not like the slot canyons. It's very sandy and open to the sun. But once you get through that part, you will start to get more and more into the slot canyons where it's just like so beautiful, more shady, and it's a rocky hike. So it's much easier to hike through and our dogs loved it they absolutely loved hiking through this area the thing about the hike is you can go for as long as you want you just decide how long you want to hike for um it's just you know when you want to turn around and go back make that decision when you feel like it's right time to turn around because you don't want to be like too tired to make the haul all the way back the further you get in, like the more breathtaking it is. It's more similar to the pictures that you see when you see people taking tours and, and those types of views. We personally walked about an hour each way. I don't really know the distance, but it was definitely about an hour each way. We stopped in the middle to have a little lunch break with the sandwiches that we brought and for the dogs to you know, rest and, and cool down. And it was like the perfect amount of time, the hour in, lunch, hour out. Um, obviously everyone's different, but for us, that was the perfect amount of time. We got like in pretty far. We got to take some amazing pictures. And also it was very quiet that far in. Not a lot of people venture that far in. So we only passed a handful of other people so if you are making this trip and you have it in you to hike at least that far i would definitely 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 recommend it just pace yourself when we got back from our hike we noticed that there was way 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 more kayaks and more people than there was before so the good thing is there was more people to help us reload our kayak which is awesome because it's very hard to do with two dogs we like cooled them off in the water and you know got everything back in our kayaks we changed it a whole thing and and then we headed back to the marina we saw so many more people out this time and that included more boats after we left like after we got out of the no wake zone of the canyon there was definitely more boats the fact that there was more boats and you know we were probably pretty tired from hiking and having a long day it felt like getting back took way more energy it was doable and the conditions were fine so we just pushed through and made it back the dogs were exhausted at this point so they laid down and stayed pretty still on the ride back when you get back to the marina, you unload your kayak, return your life vest, and you do have to enter the office to tell them that you're back. Make sure you tell them like, I'm back and this is like my first and last name so they don't think that you are lost at sea. They just wanna confirm that you've returned safely. Then you have to wait for a golf cart ride back to your car. At this hour, there are a lot more people waiting for a ride, so you can expect to wait around a bit, but we had like our snacks and our dogs were just laying down, so it was fine. Our trip was amazing. Like it was nothing short of amazing. Bucket list experience, like once in a lifetime experience. The dogs had so much fun. I love that we were able to give them that experience in life. It was so successful but it did take a lot of planning. That's okay because it went so, so smoothly. And honestly, it was so worth it. When we were out there, so many people who we passed by on our hike were surprised to see dogs and asked us about it. We did pass probably 
like two or three other people with dogs while we were there. So some people do know about this secret. Even for beginners, I would totally recommend this as long as you're prepared. My boyfriend and I are pretty active people. He has some kayaking experience. I have none. I was scared before the trip. Once I got used to the kayak, it was, it was perfectly fine. It's just amazing. We had such a blast. I'm I'm so glad that we did it. Such a cool experience for both you and your dog. I hope you try it. I hope you have as wonderful of a time as we did. If you have any questions that I didn't cover, leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Like I said, I was looking up all the details planning this and looking for resources, so I want to be that resource for you. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other questions, and I hope this helps plan your trip.